actually met Mike in Toronto in 1980 when I was up there uh, doing a show. I was working with Stud as Blackjack Mulligan Jr. and Dick Byers brought Rotundo in the dressing room to introduce him to everybody. He was just breaking him in. He was just about to go to Germany and I met him then. Now, when Mike was in Florida with you, was that the time the Briscoes played the red ball on him that he got caught on the fence? Or were you, was that before you guys were together? No, oh, he was, that happened to him up in Charlotte. Oh, okay. What happened there exactly? Because I've heard a lot of different versions of that. I've heard the story a few times, but I, I just know that he was out and it was late at night and he'd been drinking and he tried to get in the pool and he slipped on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys click right away as a tag team? Yeah, I mean, you know, when we met, you know, that there was, we just clicked. And then when uh, when he came to Florida, you know, I remembered him and he remembered me and we were friends automatically. Yeah, we were, we've been good friends since the start. How early into your friendship did he start dating your sister? Probably about uh, two years after after he had been in Florida. Did that concern you at all, knowing how uh, wrestlers could be on the road? No, because I knew Rotundo, and he's Rotundo is a real he's a real good stand-up guy. So I mean, he just <laughs> he, he's a good guy. I trust him. When you uh, joined the WWE with him in 1984, uh, what led to that? They just recruited you, or? Well, we had just, we had left the Florida Territory in 84. We had the show at the uh, Orange Bowl, and Dusty was booking, and Dusty felt like that uh, they gave him a short count. So, Basically, the whole company just went to uh, Jim Crockett Promotions. We just up and left Florida and went to Jim Crockett Promotions and, and went right into it. But that first, uh, I'd say the first six or eight months, nobody was making any money. And I had made uh, three checks, three weeks checks of $150 a week. And I had, like a nut, I just bought a new Corvette, so. I drove the Corvette back to the dealership and then I gave my notice and I started for Vince the next night. That was the first time we went. Okay. And I was there for a few months and then uh, and then Mike came. Was it planned for him to come to be partners or was he going to be a signals originally? Well, he, he and my sister were newly married and you know and we're we're really close friends and and I knew if I was making 150 bucks, he was making 100. So, you know, just I just wanted to keep him and my sister fed too. So, I just shot it past Vince, and he said, "Yeah." So here came Mike. Was it Vince that came up with the U.S. Express name? I don't know who came up with that. It just, uh, you know, it just it just happened. But. Uh, I'm sure it was him, and it was probably Vince. The Hulk Hogan's music was originally your music first. Uh, why did they switch it to Hulk? Well, we had all been using music that was, you know, we were using Born in the USA, and I think that the company had to start paying copyrights on everything. And uh, I had been there for about a year and a half, or two years. And uh, I left and Spivey went back in, so I think that they just uh, just took it off of me and Rotundo and gave it to Hogan. Because it was, you know, it, they didn't have to pay any copyright and it was done by Jimmy. Do you have any, uh, any memories that stand out about the first WrestleMania? Was the first first time I met The Rock. The Rock was, I think he was 13 years old, 
And me and Rotunda were the youngest guys in the dressing room, so he came down and hung out with us in our dressing room for a couple hours. And, and uh, you know, other than that, I just, as usual on any big show, you, you know, you plan on doing 20 minutes and you end up getting cut down from 20 to 15 to 10 to 7. I don't remember how, how long the match was, but it was cut down a whole lot from what it was supposed to be, so that was a condensed version. <laughs> the Iron Sheik went on in later years, once uh, internet came out, to be known as like a really insane, mentally unstable individual. Was he always like that, or is he, he's always been that way, and, and I'm sure he still is. <laughs> Memories of your matches against uh, Beefcake and Valentine. Uh, I mean, you know, it, it was easy work. And uh, we did the thing here in Philadelphia to where uh, uh, I think it was their manager, Jimmy. Anyway, put the cigar out in my eye, but but uh, I just wasn't up for the idea of having to wear an eye patch for for the rest of my career. So you know, I'm sure that uh, Valentine is hot about that, you know, because I, I left right at the beginning of the program but but it was just uh, it, it was a, it was a different time in the business we traveled every day we, you know we would work in Spokane Washington one night and Miami the next night so we'd have to do all our sleeping on the planes and it, it was just a rough life what did you think of uh, Brutus Beefcake's wrestling ability because there's a lot of different opinions on that <laughs> Well, I mean, he, you know, he, he, he's, he's found a gimmick that, that he can live with, so that's fine. But, but his actual wrestling ability is, I, I, you know, I wouldn't say it's up to par with, with mine or Mike, but, but he had a good partner, Valentine, that could lead him. Then, you know, it worked out for him. They, they had a good run. But... Uh, I don't think I ever worked a single with Eddie, so I don't know how he was as a single. So, as you mentioned, I guess you the whole reason you left was due to the eye patch, or was there more to it than that? Well, I mean, it was just a, it was just the work schedule. Mike and I had been 96 days straight, and we were in uh, Baltimore, and we were playing car tag with a bunch of the other guys. And tail lights and headlights got knocked out of cars, so. Rotundo, just he left. He, he he left and said he was going home. So he 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 left me there in Baltimore that night. And I guess he flew home. And uh, I we had to work in Boston the next night. So I went to Boston and I I, I told him that I quit. And Rotundo was at home. And uh, I went home. And then Rotundo came right back the next day. <laughs> so, so I was the heel. I had to stay. I stayed home. Well, I guess in those days there was no cell phones, so there wasn't much communication with you guys. In the yeah. yeah. It, it makes you wonder how you got by, you know, the, the way communication is now with texting and calling and everything. But we did it. And you had an appearance for AWA at the Wrestle Rock. Uh, Rumble. Do you have any memories of that big match? That was a big stadium uh, show in '86. Did we work with Kern? Yeah, the, I think the fabulous yeah. ones. With Kern and Stan Lane. Uh, you know, I just remembered that it was in the stadium, and I remember you know the ring being set up in the middle of the stadium. Uh, Mike and I were just in and out of there, so you know, there wasn't a lot. We, we were in that day and out the next morning, so we weren't really there long either. Favorite tag team partner? Oh, I, I guess, I'd, you know, Rotundo and I are such good buddies, and we're good fishing buddies now, so, you know, he, he was my favorite tag team partner. 